the second major idea around which uh, we make sustainable design of a farm system is uh, integration. So with integration we try to reduce labor and increase the resilience. Uh, integration has many layers. It is not an uh, easy concept because one is a level of integration which is close integration and that happens in uh, in a particular enterprise like home garden. So in home garden there are some trees, fruit trees. In home garden there is some uh, animals. In home garden there is some vegetables. So how do we combine perennial plants with uh, seasonal plants and with animal or bird or fish. This is usually the um, subject of integration. And in close integration, not only we try to use the waste of the animal, but also the labor of the animal. So we combine in a way that each component help each other through their work or through structural support like a tree supporting a climber or something. Uh, the second kind of integration is about integrating different enterprises within the farm. So, what is the integration between home garden and rice field? What is the integration between the animal, the cow shed and the garden? And this kind of integration has been traditionally already done in many small households. The third level of integration is more question of integrating our farm to the watershed, to the environment around. So how does our farm relate to the forest? How does it relate to different kind of uh, things that are happening around us? And the fourth level of integration is actually a broad question of how does it integrate within the eco-region, integrating with the... So those two are little bit broader subject. Today what we are discussing is more question of close integration, not loose integration, also little bit but mainly close integration. So integration means, uh, for example, if we take in different ecosystems, uh, in a garden, living fence is one example, but much better is an example of the living trellis where we use maybe drumstick tree or Sesbania grandiflora as in place of the post of the trellis. And then we make the trellis high and we allow the climbers to grow on the trellis. And in the shade we grow various kind of shade tolerant vegetables like chili or maybe taro. So the it is possible to integrate also earthworm raising, vermicompost or 
making a small pond under the trellis, depending on the size. So this is one example how the concept of integration and of multi-story planting applies to home garden. In the rice field, uh, because it is an aquatic environment, in a lowland rice field, it is an aquatic environment. So, by putting ducks, by putting some, the duck helps the rice in many ways. It, it, it can graze the grass, it can eat the pest, it can move the rice plant so that the insect pest fall. It can reduce methane emission from the rice field and make it more climate resilient. It also, of course, drops the manure and as a result, the, there is very little need to buy from outside. So then the question comes that the, at this level it seems simple, but the question is how much water is good for rice and how much water is good for duck? And what should be the size of duck that we introduce and when to introduce? And how many per hectare or how many per acre or how many per bigger? This kind of uh, close integration is always based on calculations, on trying to see, on maintaining proportions. Proper proportion not maintained uh, will create problem. So the age of the duck, the age of the rice, the level of the water, then we start thinking that, okay, in the rice field we are keeping duck, but what will the duck eat? Do we buy from outside the food? or? Should we grow, should we make a, grow some azola? Should we grow some uh, tree like mulberry or something on the, on the buns around the rice field? So we need to think about creating this kind of connection between each other and it is this creation of connection that is called integration. And, for example, in an orchard ecosystem, so suppose there are lemon and papaya and guava trees in a one-acre plot. So under that, keeping some chicken, local country chicken, is helpful because they scratch the soil, they do the weeding, they eat up the infected plants and uh, infected fruits which fall down from the tree and thereby control the pest. So uh, in different contexts, in, in the lowland context, in the orchard context, in the home garden context, in these contexts we can see the benefit of integration. But integration usually is needs two, three things. Number one, it needs sometime alteration of the small ecosystem. I mean, it needs sometime digging pond, it needs sometime making barn, it makes needs sometime uh, making uh, a can channel around the field. So it always involves some initial investment to create proper habitat for the animal and fish and bird component so so that our labor is reduced. If if we have a pond and if we are making a chicken uh, house right next to the pond and extend part of it so that the dropping fall straight into the pond, on one hand it creates the trouble that we have to calculate how much chicken is good for how much water surface. But on the other hand, it means that we do not have to interfere at all. It automatically, every day, the uh, 
droppings can fall for a uh, 100 square meter pond 10 meter by 10 meter pond um, all local medium size about 5 6 chicken is enough so if we have 5 6 chicken on the barn and we have 3 4 ducks which are swimming and adding oxygen to the water and eating the weeds and we have some azolla and we have some nature also supplies if we are not using poison then tadpoles will be there small fish will be there of course we can add fish but we need to think which is the what is the ratio we use how many again how many fish and so the ecological agriculture integration is a matter always of managing resources the second part of integration the second aspect of when trying to do integration is to understand that in some cases some kind of a bioreactor maybe a biogas maybe a pond maybe a compost pit barmi compost pit some kind of intermediary structure which will help in recycling the waste and uh, kind of creating food conducive environment or something like that for each other is a way of increasing production if sometime we have possibility of using raw sometime like for example in a home garden we have a movable cage made of bamboo uh, where the chicken itself acts as a as a tractor it digs up soil it eats up all the weed it eats up the insect and then we move the cage to another part of the garden and in that part we can put seeds directly because it is already clean it is already fertilized it is already loosened so thereby by doing this kind of thing we avoid a lot of labor and also protect the other plants from being eaten by the chicken third aspect apart from these two is the more the number of connections the better so if the energy is uh, many we need to understand that in farming the energy from sun this is the central energy this is the source of all energy and we need plants in order to convert that energy to food energy food for small animals food for birds food for us and we eat each other also so but each time energy gets converted it lose so no how many level we call topic level in ecology the more are the levels distance between the small organisms to the large organisms each time only about 10% of the energy gets passed so if i give you 100 rupees and you pass on only 10 rupees to the next person and he passes on only 1 rupees and then it becomes 10 paisa energy we should try as much as possible to close the to have less levels so in a rice field we are keeping fish maybe because we are keeping insect eating type of fish in the pond however we are keeping herbivore kind of fish because then the chain is much smaller in a you producing a lot of herb you are putting in lot of plankton and the fish is eating it and it is becoming so it is growing much faster if the plankton or 
like zooplankton or something, was eaten by a small insect and the small insect was eaten by another insect and that insect was eaten by fish or it was eaten by a frog, then that frog was eaten by a fish, then the chain will become longer and therefore the production quantity also will become less. So, the choice of species in a integrated system is very important. The, we have to always try to think what is the energy chain and where we are creating reserve points for storing rainwater, for storing, for emergency storing food, for storing carbon in the soil. So we need to think of these things when making an integrated design.